so you recently posted a selfie that went viral kind of on the internet and because um, you didn't wear a bra. Right. How did that feel for you? Um, you know, it was funny. I actually didn't think it was going to get as much attention as it did. I knew I was going to get some negative backlash just because, you know, mm. <laughs> some people are living in the 1690s. Yeah. Um, but I didn't think it was going to be what it was. People really freaked out about it. Mm. Um, I guess it's in interesting because I see women walking around all day with no bra on and mm. I think it's wonderful and I think there's nothing wrong with it yeah. and I think that's what your body looks like. Um, and I actually took the photos, I wasn't gonna post them. I took the photos because I was working on music and mm. I was uh, I was wearing very little makeup and it was like a different vibe for me. Yeah. And I took them to send to my best friend and my boyfriend and then I was like, oh, they're really quite nice oh no, I can't post them because mm -hmm. I'm not wearing a bra. Yeah. And then I was like, that's so silly. Why would I like try to, hi like why would I be so scared to post that's what I look like? That's what mm -hmm. all women everywhere, by the way, also all men, like everybody <laughs> has, I don't know if you can say, I don't know if it's inappropriate to say, everybody has nipples, right? Yeah. Like that, right. everybody looks like that. <laughs> And so I was like, that's so silly to try to like not post that just because I'm afraid of getting backlash. Mm -hmm. And so I posted it thinking it wasn't gonna be a big deal. And uh, it was quite educational for me though because what happened was, I won't go on about this forever, but what I noticed mm -hmm. was in the comment section, people started talking about things that had nothing to do with it. They mm -hmm. started talking about one thing and then it was like, gun control and yeah. politics and it was, you know, the climate emergency. And it was just quite <laughs> obvious to me, what it made very clear to me was people's projections of what's okay yeah. and what's not okay and what they believe other people should do with their time mm -hmm. um, has very little to do with the person mm -hmm. and has everything to do with this sort of like general um, feeling that people yeah. have right now, this very divisive thing going on, people like to get yeah. upset. Um, and uh, and what I mostly got from it that I thought was so wonderful was I got a lot of like 12 year old girls and mm -hmm. a lot of mothers being like, I just wanna say as a woman or as a young woman or as a girl in school or as somebody with daughters, mm -hmm. Um, I, like this 12 year old girl was like, I'm 12 and I am sexualized on a daily basis just for having the body that I do by, yeah. by men, you know, not just boys. And it makes me feel so scared and it makes me feel so wrong. Like mm -hmm. I'm made wrong, like I'm dirty. And you posting this makes me aware that this is, this is how I'm meant to look. This is, yeah. no, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, there's nothing that should be hidden about my mm -hmm. body. You know, obviously like within the realm of what is uh, safe. Yeah. But like just the way that I look and if I want to wear a shirt, I, I shouldn't have to wear a bra. And thank you for, you know, showing, showing that. It's yeah. really not a big deal, you guys. Like it really was very silly. Yeah. What I really like about your Instagram account is that you like kind of show all different facets a girl has, like without makeup, with makeup, sad, happy. Why is that so important to you? Because women are multidimensional. And I really, I think it's very easy to kind of pigeonhole yourself and make yourself one dimensional because mm -hmm. that's what people expect. Um, I think that's what a lot of people prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't mean to be bitter. I just mean that like I've really noticed if you are yeah. one dimensional, it really goes over very well. Yeah. And things only happen if you become <laughs> a little bit less what people want. Um, and uh, I think it's important, you know, to show bad days, good days, to show, what what I was always most afraid to show growing up was intensity. Mm. I think that I was always a very emotional girl and I was, I, I had a lot of darkness mm. in me and people were like, oh, we don't want to see that. We especially don't want to see that from a young girl. Yeah. Um, and it's not like, it's not like the kind of darkness of like, you know, like black nail polish, mm -hmm. or like tattoos, you know, <laughs> like I do that as well. But it's not like a, it's not like a um, aesthetic. It's like I, ha I was, I had a lot of pain yeah. and I had a lot of sadness. And I had a lot of emotion um, and, and days where I wasn't so much like that. And I just mm -hmm. really felt growing up that I, I couldn't express that. Yeah. And I really would love to be that for young girls where they can they can look at somebody and, and see somebody who's very, uh, like you said, faceted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not all one thing. Yeah. How did you learn like to embrace your own opinion and be confident with yourself? Then? It took a long time. Yeah. It took a long time. I was actually recently talking to my boyfriend about it. It took a lot of, I think, 
adversity because mm-hmm. at first when I started posting things on social media that people weren't responding well to, I got so anxious because I've always been a very anxious person. And I have this response in me that I talk about a lot in therapy um, where I'm on, I'm like, everything's going to go wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. When something bad happens, I have this panic where I'm yeah. like, everything's going to go wrong. The earth is going to open up. I'm going to fall into it and that will be the end. Anytime something goes wrong, I tend to think it's the end of the world. Um, And then it took me kind of like really pushing my own envelope and being like, what's the motivation behind this? Mm -hmm. Do I care more about how I'm perceived than I care about talking about, you know, equality for women? Do I care more about the negativity I get than I talk, than I care about talking about gun policy? Mm -hmm. If I do, that's something I need to examine in myself. And if I don't, then I should post this, right? Right. Right. Um, And, and once I started doing that, it was almost like the adversity made me more grounded in my opinions. Mm -hmm. Like, I started to read what people had to say that was against things like that. And I was like, wow, I really entirely disagree. You know, I really disagree with what you're saying. And and it's almost because I was able to be a part of that conversation that I learned how I really felt about things. And that's another reason I keep posting about it is because I think so many young girls, when they get into, you know, comment wars or things like that, they really realize how they feel Mm -hmm. about certain topics. And a lot of young girls have said that. They're like, I never really thought about it. I never thought I had a place in this conversation. And now that I've had these conversations, I, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I think that's pretty cool. That's good. Yeah, great. And that's why I also think you're a great role model when it comes to like feminism and stuff like that. Thanks. What would you say is the biggest challenge women still have to face every day? Well, that's a really big question because it depends on where you are in the world. Mm. Um, and I, because I can't comment on that because I could never make a broad statement, mm-hmm. I think something that's kind of a silent killer in terms of um, what women have to face is actually the nuances mm. of social interactions the tiny messaging every day in media, obviously in advertising, like that's very talked about, but just in like the tiny messaging in in the little things that you don't notice are happening, because those are the things that are hardest to pin down. That's like when, when you run into somebody who's really like, women have equal rights, you know? Yeah. It's very hard to explain um, sometimes in the, in the sort of smaller minute details what makes, um, what makes it difficult to be a woman every day. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's, I definitely think it's that because it's intangible and it's something Mm -hmm. that all women understand, but it's quite hard to articulate is is the social um, implications and the social normalities that that seem like they've always been around, but really Mm -hmm. were were quite, um, they weren't always there, right? And it's it's everywhere. Okay. So uh, let's move over to the fan questions. Um, I'm gonna start with the most popular and then you can pick some from here. Amazing. Um, the most popular was, what's your favorite memory from Descendants 3? Huh. Um, I think my favorite memory actually was the, f- I mean, we have so many memories. Uh, I, could, I could talk f- for hours, but I think recently through talking about it, my, um, my favorite memory was uh, the day that we wrapped the third film, mm-hmm. there was there was a rap party a few days later, but there was no rap party that day. And, and we said, what do we want to do? And we all kind of agreed that the most special thing to do would be to take off our wigs and our makeup, get mm-hmm. in our robes and our pajamas and go to the store together and go down all the aisles and get all of our favorite junk food. And then go up to, we went up to my hotel room, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and we all just like cuddled on the floor and Aww. cried and like ate good food. And it was just us kids. and. Mm-hmm. That was really something I'll always remember. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, go. how fun. This one. <laughs> I didn't understand. I was like, what's in that? What's in the <laughs> box? Um, how would you describe yourself in five words? Um, from XX Felicity for now, XX. <laughs> Shout out. Um, myself in five words. Um, complex. <laughs> um excitable, intense, loving, and uh, growing. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Next one. <laughs> I really had to think about that, you guys. <laughs> okay. That's always a tough one. I know, because <laughs> you don't want to be like, oh, nice, funny, funny <laughs> super pretty. <laughs> okay. Kath.gb says, what advice would you like to give to the people out there? All the people, all the people out there. <laughs> um, 
I guess uh, don't waste your time on like negativity and don't waste your time on um, hurting others because it'll only ever hurt yourself. Also, who mm -hmm. wants to hurt others? What a horrible pastime. <laughs> um, and try to remember that like everything is fleeting. I know that that sounds depressing, but it, it can be empowering if you hold it in the right way. Yeah. Um, everything goes goes very fast. So love yourself and love others and and do your best to. Yeah, have a long, fulfilled life. Power Girl, whatever that is. <laughs> um, will there be a Forest Descendants movie? What do you think will happen? I don't know if there will be a Forest Descendants movie. I would, <laughs> I would love to give you any intel I have um, that I may or may not have. But it's, uh, it's a, I mean, I don't, I think that the world is forever expanding. I mm. don't think that, I don't think that it's a reasonable ending. You know, like, I, I mean, I don't think that it's like, I think it could go on forever. Mm -hmm. Even though this chapter, I do think that we've wrapped up in a lot of ways. It could, it yeah. could, it could always, it could always go on. So great. Last one. I think. Okay, last, <laughs> one. last one. Sorry if I didn't pick you. Long nails. Josie official says, "What Descendants movie is your favorite?" I think the third one. Yeah. I think the third Why? one's my favorite. Yeah. Because I think the music's the best. I mm -hmm. think that we were all closest. So I think you can really like see that love and that bond and that comfortability. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely, I think, the most magic, the most like backstory. Okay. And yeah. your favorite song? My favorite song from that one? Yeah. Uh, prob probably Do What You Gotta Do or My Once Upon a Time. I don't know. They're all really good. Yeah. I just love those because I sang them so much yeah. that like, of course, I feel like I know them the best. Um, I love Good To Be Bad too, though. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Thank How about you. your music? Is it coming my out? My music is coming out in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my music is coming out like very soon. I think I'm even, there's even a cover going up today. So nice. <laughs> Lots of things Great. happening. Thank you. Thank Can you we so take much. a quick selfie? Yeah, of course.